Welcome everybody to the first visioning session for the, uh, the update of Ovita's comprehensive plan. Uh, what this document is, is the thing by which all other, it, it's the rule that sets all the other rules. So if you would like to see Oviedo be different or better or more creative, I, I will not be chiming in at this session. Uh, the, so I hope all of you will say a whole lot because we want to make this what everybody in the community wants, not just the five people sitting up there on city council right now at this moment in time. So with that, get to it, have a fun time, and I'll see you at the other end. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Teresa, would you like to uh, say a, a few words before we start? Make sure you introduce yourself, please. Sure. Good evening. Um, my name is Teresa Correa. I'm the Development Services Director for the City of Oviedo. I would like to welcome everybody to the first online visioning workshop for the City's Comprehensive Plan Update. The Comp Plan is a document adopted by City Council that establishes the policies and goals that will guide the City on community development. It is the backbone of any planning effort. The Comp Plan provides sets of policies on different elements such as land use, transportation, public utilities, recreation, housing and conservation within a specific planning time horizon. We are now planning for the year 2040. This is the first of three community uh, workshops and today you'll be asked to help us answer the question, where are we now? We are excited to launch the public participation process with the complaint update and I would like to thank everyone that is taking the time to contribute to this visioning process and help us plan the future of Oviedo. So let's start. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kurt Estratka. I lead the uh, community planning and design uh, practice at DHP's Orlando office. Uh, we are the consultant under contract to assist the city with this uh, comprehensive plan update. Um, and I wanted to start by going over the agenda for uh, the evening. Um, first, we wanna talk about the uh, uh, virtual meeting ground rules so everybody understands uh, how this works and when you have a chance to participate. Um, Teresa already talked about the comprehensive plan and the visioning process briefly, but I'll provide a little bit more uh, in information about that. Um, we want to introduce to you what we call our, our virtual collaboration space, and that's an area we've set up uh, since we're not able to meet in person, unfortunately. It's like a virtual uh, lobby where you can go and look at the, uh, the meeting materials, uh, the boards we set up, a recording of this presentation, a, a mapping station where you can provide comments on areas of the map. Uh, so that's going to be open for a week so that you can uh, do that at, at your leisure. Um, we'll, we'll have some time for questions and answers at the end of the session, and then we'll talk about the next step moving forward. So let's talk about our virtual meeting uh, ground rules. Uh, so as I mentioned before, this, uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be available um, probably tomorrow on the city's official uh, YouTube channel. Um, all attendees are muted by default and cannot share your screen. And we're doing that to um, prevent any uh, profanity or any other kind of uh, speech like that. Um, about midway through the, um, through the session here, uh, we're gonna do a interactive uh, poll EV exercise um, where you'll actually use your, your mobile phone if you have it handy uh, to participate. So make sure you have uh, your device, uh, but if you're using a computer to attend this meeting, you can uh, simply open a web browser and participate that way. Um, if you have any questions or technical issues, uh, you can submit a, an issue to our, our technical team. We've got three staff members on, on board the call. Um, who will be able to help you with audio issues or video issues. Um, so you can simply uh, uh, hit the, the Q&A button and send them a message. Um, and then when, once we get to the, uh, the question and answer session, uh, what we'll ask you to do is, is to raise your virtual hand by pressing the button there and we'll be able to answer, um, we'll be able to answer questions in the order they come in. And I'll tell you about the other ways you can also participate as well. All right, so what is a comprehensive plan? Uh, Teresa kicked the meeting off by, by describing this, but it's, as she said, a plan to manage growth and development within your community. Uh, it contains goals, objectives, and policies uh, for just about every aspect of the community, uh, ranging from future land use, or how will the city arrange its, its buildings and, uh, and, and commercial uses, 
and office uses and conservation uses. Uh, it's got a transportation element, which, which looks at how will the, um, you know, how will residents and visitors uh, move around the city? How does freight get in and out? And what's the, you know, the most uh, efficient balance between, um, you know, moving people quickly, but also uh, having a, a safe uh, environment for people to walk or bicycle. Um, there's a housing element, environmental uh, resources uh, element. Uh, it looks at public infrastructure. So uh, it, it helps to answer the question whether or not the city will have enough uh, potable water to support development in the future, or whether it will have enough uh, wastewater infrastructure um, or, um, you know, or, or other types of uh, public services. Um, and as Teresa mentioned, all development within the city must be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Now, you know, residents, uh, property owners have the opportunity to petition the city to amend the comprehensive plan. Uh, and that goes through a, a you know, a well-established process that uh, can be done uh, that, that goes through several public hearings. So all residents um, have a stake in the comprehensive plan. Uh, what we are doing as, as the start of this plan is amending the entire plan uh, from, from start to finish uh, to a new 2040 uh, horizon. Um, the last time the, the plan went through a major update was in 2010, and the current planning horizon is 2025, so just five years from now, so not, not, not really the long-term plan that's intended. So the new update will push it to uh, the year 2040, so we will be looking at what are the population growth projections up through 2040, and then how does that impact uh, other services like transportation or water or sewer or solid waste at that time. And we'll be able to help answer the questions, does the city have enough capacity um, at that time uh, to adjust for that? Or will, will the city need to take some other uh, actions to be able to maintain that? So. Um, our purpose overall is to plan for the next 20 years of growth, looking at how we can protect the environment and maintain the, uh, the economic prosperity that the, the city enjoys. And we also want to engage everybody in, in this citywide visioning process. Uh, again, we, we really wish we could have been uh, doing this in person. Um, maybe maybe the next meeting we'll be able to, to do it in person, but uh, we've if, if not, we've developed a, a good alternative online. Uh, so we are using a, a four-step process uh, that's also known as the Oregon model. Um, so we are going to be asking uh, citizens questions uh, along the way to try to uh, update the comprehensive plan. And it's, it's very important to note that this is, a, this is a process. We're not trying to solve everything in one night, in one meeting. Uh, that's not possible to do. But we, what we're using is, is a building block process that builds one question upon another, with the first one being, where are we now? And the questions that we'd like to ask you tonight deal with how you are, you know, how you um, uh, react to your city. How do you, um, how do you think that the, either the physical, social, or cultural identities uh, of it are important or should be changed? Uh, how do you define a good quality of life for, uh, for yourself? And uh, we're, we're actually, because we're not able to do this in person with whiteboards and, and sticky notes and, and stuff like that, we've developed a, um, a, a virtual collaboration space that I'll, I'll show you a little bit later. So that's the first part of the, of, of the visioning exercise, answering the question, where are we now? It's uh, the baseline existing conditions. I will show you a series of maps um, in, in a few minutes uh, that just show the, you know, again, the existing conditions today. The second question at, at our next workshop will be answering, where are we going? So what does the future look like uh, for the city of Oviedo? Um, what should it look like? How should the buildings and roads uh, look like? And then what should we do to, um, you know, kind of establish the city's identity as part of the overall economic region? Uh, at, at this uh, stage in the process, we will be moving from 2020 to 2040 and looking at how that population increase and, uh, and growth has an impact on the city. And if we were to just develop using the current policies 
uh, what, what impact would that have? Would there be unintended consequences um, that the city planners uh, had, hadn't thought of in, in the year um, 2010? The third question is, where do we want to go? So this is where citizens really have the opportunity to vision and imagine different alternative scenarios for how the city could look in the, in the year 2040. So it's a, it's a very creative, very engaging process where we, you know, we, we lay out several different growth scenarios which are based upon that trend scenario of, of where are we going uh, and, and provide people with uh, some different choices uh, to see what, um, again, where, where they would like the city to go in the future. And the final step is answering the question, how do we get there? So backing up one step, we've, we've selected our, our preferred vision or our preferred future, but just selecting that, um, that option doesn't mean that we know exactly what we need to do to, to achieve that. So that is where um, the comprehensive plan, goals, objectives, and policies will be written in order to, um, you know, to, to encourage and promote and require that change to happen. So we're gonna be having uh, visioning workshops. Um, I'll give you the schedule at the end of this presentation for all these different steps and we hope that you're able to join us for, for all four of these uh, different steps. So the, the first question, as I mentioned, is asking where are we now? How do citizens perceive the city? And this is the part of the presentation where we'd like you to get your either your mobile phone or open up a browser in your, um, in, in your, uh, on your computer or, or device, um, if you would go to the, the website www.pollev.com, that will bring you to a, a place where you can enter in uh, the login, which is VHBCFE, and click on join. So again, that's VHB. CFE, and then click join. I'm gonna give people a couple minutes to, uh, to get to this spot, and then I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Um, if you're having a little trouble, don't worry. There are instructions on uh, how to join this, uh, this polling exercise on the next slide as well. And if you are having uh, any issues, uh, please use the Zoom raise hand feature and one, of, one member of our staff will reach out to you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to our next slide. Again, the instructions here are also posted on, the, on that slide. Um, we are going to do a word cloud exercise to ask what are Oviedo's strengths as a community? So as you can see, this is starting to build based on the responses uh, from uh, from the members of the audience today. And the way word clouds work, uh, the more times somebody enters a word, the bigger it gets. So right now, uh, it looks like the, the majority or the, the plurality of attendees find that family is Oviedo's uh, biggest strength as a community. And based on what I know, I would agree with that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Tyler Johnson um, from BHP as well. I just wanted to let everyone know if anyone is having trouble uh, joining the Poll EV, there is a link in the chat box, uh, which is another icon on, on the bottom of your screen that you can click to get into that as well. Thank you, Tyler. And right, I see that the word cloud is still moving, so that means people are still uh, providing their thoughts, which is great. Um, you can see a couple other um, words have emerged as having multiple responses, such as uh, schools, history, diverse. 
and it keeps moving. So I'm going to move us on in, in a couple minutes. We have uh, two more slides like this to ask you um, some different questions. But you can see how this provides a, a very quick and easy visualization of some of the common uh, feelings that, that um, people had in this meeting. Um, so I, I think uh, reading this, um, it's, it's very similar to a, an exercise we did with city council as well as staff. And we'll show you that uh, after we get through this. All right, if anybody is still typing, uh, please finish up. I'm gonna move us on in about, in about five seconds here. Looks like some great feedback though. All right, so you, you guys all got to brag about what you thought the strengths of the communities are. Uh, we're gonna ask you a little bit of a tougher question now um, using one word at a time. What do you believe Oviedo's challenges are as a community? So I'm, I'm seeing that the uh, overall concern, uh, traffic and walkability are, are somewhat related. And that's something that a, a comprehensive plan would address both in terms of uh, transportation uh, element, but also the, the future land use element because growth, uh, land use and, and transportation are, are very related. Um, and then I also see the, the word growth there. So there's some uh, perceptions of, of challenges of, of how the city is growing today. And again, that's something that, that we will help um, to, to address together. All right, I'm gonna give folks uh, another, uh, say 20 seconds to get their last answers in. Uh, we will post the results of this uh, as part of our meeting summary. And again, this, this is being recorded and will be posted to the, the project collaboration site as well as the YouTube channel. Okay. Well, now that uh, our meeting attendees have, have told us their perceptions of the city's uh, strengths and the city's challenges, uh, we're gonna ask you one more time to do the same exercise. Um, but this time, the, the question is, how do you envision Oviedo in the year 2040? And again, please try to use one word at a time, or if you need to, you can add a, um, a hyphen.
Looks like um, 60,000 got split up by a comma. So maybe during the Q&A session, uh, whoever put that in could, could help us understand if that means 60,000 people or uh, what the context of that is. I think I also saw um, Palo Alto, California. So I'd be interested to hear if uh, from the respondent if they think that's a, a good example of, of what uh, Oviedo should aspire to, or if that's uh, an example that they don't think is, is appropriate. Okay, about 20 more seconds. Okay, I'm going to close this down. I want to thank you all for, for participating. Um, you know, again, this is just the first step of a, a building block process, and this kind of information helps to, um, you know, visualize what many people had in common when they think about the, the strengths and the challenges and, and a future vision for the city. Um, so, you know, just looking at some of the words over, overdeveloped being a concern. Um, so, again, that's what a, a comprehensive plan, the, the plan for all plans, as Teresa said, is, is meant to address. Um, I see sustainable is, is, is pretty large, and that's consistent with some of the discussions we had with, uh, with staff and others before. Um, so what I'd like to do next is, is show you, um, this word cloud is, is, is not what you just worked on as, as meeting attendees. Uh, these are, um, this is a condensed word cloud of um, two sessions we had, uh, one with city staff and, and some development community members and the other with city council that we had uh, two weeks ago. So we combined them together and I thought it'd be interesting for you, uh, the, the, the workshop participants to see um, and then be able to compare uh, how the, the responses that you gave compared to the responses that were given to us uh, by both staff and, and, and your elected officials. So these were the strengths of the, of the community. Um, you, again, you can see family uh, rose to the top, and I believe that was the same as um, one of our top responses uh, in this session today. So it's good to see that there's um, definitely some uh, consistency there and, and similar similar thoughts. Uh, in terms of challenges as a community, uh, probably no surprise that the traffic and connectivity were, were the challenges that both staff members of the development community and uh, city council thought were some of the biggest challenges. Um, so again, that's that's going to be addressed as part of the the comprehensive plan. And when we do those um, different uh, alternative visions as part of the third step, uh, you know, we're going to have to look at ways that we can better link transportation and, and land use together uh, in order to um, you know reduce this concern or, or challenge. And then the final one: um, How do you envision a veto in 2040? So the the staff um, and city council responses. Um, show um, that it's a vibrant, urban, sustainable community. So again, I think it's it's pretty similar to uh, what we heard in the um, in, in the responses we just had. And uh, when we go to the the Q and A, um, you know, we, we definitely love uh, to to hear some uh, reactions from uh, you know members of the public here, and uh, tell us what uh, you know if 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 this is what you expected to see, or if this is, surprises you or even if you disagree with anything, that's okay as well. All right, um, moving on. So part of our process of um, asking where are we now, uh, we did an assessment using the city's GIS um, and, and other data sources and their existing plans uh, to try to understand, again, what is that baseline condition for where we are today um, to give everybody the same information. And uh, those of you that, that have lived in the city for a long time uh, are, would not be surprised at this at all, that there's been more than 20% growth um, in each decade since 1990. And I believe since between 1990 and 2000, there was over 100% uh, growth uh, in, in population during that, that time frame. So 
This is a community that has seen pretty explosive uh, and rapid growth. Um, and we are looking at an approximately 10,000 uh, person increase uh, by the year 2040. So moving from 40,000 to 50,000 um, as, as projected by um, the, the, the state's uh, Bureau of uh, Economic and Business Research. Um, so one of our next steps is going to be understanding uh, how that impacts uh, the community. And it looks like my cat is paying me a visit. I'm gonna put him down. Okay. Um, and then when you think about uh, the expected uh, growth, um, there, there's a question of, of what form does that take in for people that live in the city? Uh, right now, single family residential is about 50% of, of the, um, the, the, the buildable space in the city. Um, and we'll have to do an assessment. Is that pattern uh, sustainable? Does this, do the city limits even have enough room to add uh, 10,000 more people using the, the current building patterns and densities? Or will the city need to look at uh, different forms of, of density or housing products? Um, in, our, in our initial assessment, the, uh, the water, sewer, and solid waste uh, capacities look, appear to be sufficient through the year uh, 2040, but we'll do another uh, check on that as we go through um, the second step, where are we going? And it kind of as no surprise, we saw from uh, both your, um, your responses as well as the um, the staff and city commission responses, uh, traffic being that, that big concern and, and challenge. And there's, um, you know, the different plans uh, have, have different ideas for how roads like Mitchell Hammock or 434 uh, should, be, should be treated. Uh, should they be widened uh, for the benefit of cars or should they, um, you know, perhaps stay the same and, and try to put some uh, improvements on for pedestrians and bicycles, or look at alternative uh, corridors that could be used as as uh, as um, as as a uh, alternative to widening. Um, we wanted to show you a graphic that shows just how the city has grown over over the last um, twenty years. Um, if you're not aware, the city is about fifteen square miles, uh, just over ten thousand acres in size. And the, uh, the yellow and green boxes you see on the, on the map represent uh, where the city has had annexations uh, since 1990. So about 345 acres have been added since then. And uh, the, the growth, as you can see, has been uh, primarily uh, been to the north. Um, so that, you know, it'll be a question, does the city uh, continue to grow and expand its boundaries? or should we look to maintain the current boundaries and have infill within? And we're not trying to answer that question tonight. Um, that's something we will uh, you know, address as we look at uh, the future growth, but it's something for everyone to consider. In terms of existing land uses, uh, it, it's probably wouldn't surprise you that uh, single family residential is the, the majority of the, um, not only the buildable land use, but the, uh, the total land use within the city. So for those of you that aren't uh, used to reading uh, land use maps, um, yellow is a, is a residential color, which you see um, throughout most of the, uh, throughout the city, particularly in the north there. Uh, red uh, uh, is, is a commercial or sometimes a mixed use color. So that is where uh, traditionally where businesses and, and shops are located. And you can see how they are along the corridors of uh, 434 and, and Mitchell Hammock Road. And again, I just want to repeat that this presentation is going to be available on in, in the collaboration site. And then all of the maps individually will be posted there as well. So you can you can review them at um, you know at, uh, at at the pace you like. Uh, and then finally, conservation, uh, retention, and vacant lands are the next largest uh, existing land use. And you can see that on the kind of the eastern half of the, uh, of the city where, where the econ is. Um, so and that, that's going to play a factor into how the city grows and develops because lands that are already um, set as conservation uh, would have you know, limited development potential. Um, moving on to future land uses. This is a copy of the city's uh, existing uh, year 20, 2025 uh, future land use map. And as part of this project, we will be looking at a 2040 land use map because we need to think about, again, how that population 
uh, could could uh, be um, uh, accommodated within the city. Um, and I, I want to mention, I don't think I did this before, but when, when we talk about different scenarios, we, we won't just look at the Bieber projection for um, you know new growth or if you if you do nothing. We may also look at some some scenarios for say induced economic growth. So what happens if a, a major corporation or a major business relocates to uh, the city and, and that therefore drives a lot of new uh, job creation, but also a, a great demand for even more housing than, uh, than may have been expected. So that is where within the future land use uh, map of 20, 2040, we would have to plan out uh, that different area. Um, you know, a lot of the city, as you know, is, is, is already fairly built out. Uh, so there, there's going to be some uh, some you know questions we, we need to answer as, as part of this, um, but as as you would expect, uh, the um, uh, residential is a predominant uh, land use here within the future land use map of the city. Uh, there's a category called general planned uh, unit development, um, which is a somewhat flexible uh, future land use. Um, that, that it would allow up to um, uh, five dwelling units per acre or 5.5 with bonuses. Uh, these are for larger, um, larger tracts of land. So it, it, it requires a minimum of, of 15 acres before a individual could apply for this, um, this PUD land use type. Um, and then uh, conservation retention makes up a, a, a good amount of land use in, in the green there low density residential. So that is a, a minimum of one unit per acre or up to 3.5 units per acre before bonuses uh, is, is permitted. And that's, as you can see, uh, most of the north part of the city, as well as uh, areas around the, uh, the conservation areas on uh, the east side, close to the, the Econ River. Um, the city does have uh, density bonuses uh, that, that, are, that are allowable. Um, and those are for providing uh, workforce and affordable housing, uh, innovative design to preserve open space and conservation areas, uh, to promote internal traffic, um, uh, containment, or for uh, bicycle and, and pedestrian and, and mass transit uh, modes of transportation. So those are some of the ways that a landowner can get a, a density bonus within uh, their property. Um, like I said, we're going to do what's called a, a build-out scenario. So we'll look at whether or not the, the existing um, uh, land area um, and, and the acreage available um, will accommodate the future growth. So we'll provide that information to you in, uh, in the next meeting. And you'll be able to tell us if that is, if the way we show it is, is the city that you envision in the future, or if you'd like to look at some, some different scenarios. So we don't know what that's going to look like uh, yet, but that'll be a you know very interesting exercise we'll do in, in the next meeting. Environmental resources. Um, we saw that uh, parks and sustainability was very important to you in, in the work cloud exercise. Um, environmental resources, uh, which which do tend to overlap, so you may have water bodies and, and, and floodplains and wetlands in the same area, but they account for about 33% of, of the total city area. And of course, you're, you're familiar with uh, the Econ Lake Hatchie uh, River. Um, it is an outstanding Florida water body, so it has um, you know added protections and, and buffers to it uh, for development. And it's you know one of those really uh, important uh, uh, environmental systems, uh, not only for the city but for for the region. Uh, finally, the transportation network. Um, you all reported to us that traffic congestion is one of one of the biggest challenges that the city faces. Um, you know, in, in our preliminary uh, look at the, some of the existing studies that have been done, um, we see that, that various segments of uh, Mitchell Hammock Road, East Broadway Street, and Central Avenue are projected to be uh, over capacity by the year 2040. Uh, so the city has what are called level of service standards. Uh, right now, the level of service standard for these roads is uh, what's known as D or Delta. Um, so by 2040, um, they are projected to uh, operate at level of service B e or ECHO. So, um, you know, the city will, as part of this process, will want to look at, you know, are there, are there opportunities for alternative pathways 
Um, are there opportunities for, um, uh, you know, to, to reroute traffic? Or is, is a level of service E what the, the city should uh, change it to? Um, and, and, and just accept a certain level of congestion. And we're not here to answer that question tonight. Um, some folks will say, well, I'd rather have, you know, faster traffic moving through town so I can, you know, I can, I can get places faster. And some people may say um, slower traffic is, is better for local businesses. So that's something that hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to talk about in person in our next couple of visioning meetings. All right, we did do a, a review of the city's, uh, obviously it's, its current comprehensive plan, the city's strategic plan, the budget, many of the different um, uh, regional transportation plans. And they, they all reported that the city is, you know, it's poised for growth. Um, the city has a, has a good idea for, you know, how it wants to, um, you know, target industries and target, um, uh, you know, different types of, of new development, have mixed use in the downtown, um, have, have a, um, you know, a, a downtown master plan, which is currently being updated to really create that, that urban core. Um, from our re review of, of the different planning policies, there was emphasis on creating walkable communities and, and public gathering spaces and parks. Uh, there was a desire to have um, better and, and more equitable access to, to the parks and lakes and, and recreational facilities. Um, there was a desire from what we saw that the transportation system should be a little bit more diverse and less reliant on you know, those, those major roads um, that cross the city. Um, there was a focus on sustainable development, and I think that's that's one of the uh, the, um, the opportunities or the uh, um, uh, in, envision statements we saw from from many folks. Um, so it, it seems like uh, folks, at least here on this uh, workshop, agree with that. And then the the need again to diversify uh, the local economy. So with that, that is a short synopsis of uh, answering the question, uh, where are we now? We've got two uh, technical memorandums in the project collaboration space um, that, that you're, you're uh, welcome to download and read it at, um, uh, and, and, and provide comments back to the city um, that, that go into a lot more detail about all of the, the different maps and the land uses and acreages. Uh, so please feel free to download those and uh, let us know what you think of that. Um, in terms of our next steps, uh, we will have another citywide visioning meeting uh, on August 11th. It will um, either be at the city's cultural center or it'll be online, similar to this one. And that's where we're gonna answer the question, where are we going? Uh, so that is where we will provide that, that trend analysis of how the city could look in the year 2040 if, if no policies changed, if we just experienced uh, the typical amount of growth that we would expect to experience and what that does to public facilities, what that does to the maps and, and the space uh, within them. And then in September, we will have uh, a vision workshop to answer the question, that third question, where do we want to go? And that's where we will take a look at, say, three different vision alternatives and scenarios and try to find uh, creative ways to, uh, to manage the, the growth and the demands that we saw from the trend model or the, the, um, the trend from the previous meeting. Um, so we're currently working on that, that trends analysis um, and we'll, we will have that uh, available at the next meeting. All right, almost done, I promise. Uh, the next part of this is the virtual collaboration uh, room or meeting space. Uh, we will be able to put the, um, uh, the recording of this presentation in there. There's a number of different um, boards and interactive activities there for you. Uh, so we're, we're gonna ask you um, to look at a map and tell us what physical, social, cultural uh, factors you use to identify the city. And by dropping a pin on the map, it'll create a, a heat map that shows where people think you know the important spaces are. Um, there's also some open-ended comments on how you define quality of life in Oviedo, um, what do you think are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, the link to that collaboration space is, is down here. We're gonna post it into the, uh, the Zoom chat. Um, 
and I will, I will, I promise I will bring this back up at the end of the meeting uh, so that you can, you can go to it and check it out. We're going to have this space open for, uh, for one week for residents uh, and, and any stakeholder to provide comments on that. So it actually provides a, a longer comment time than, than people would normally have in just a, a two hour meeting. And I'm gonna do my best now to um, share the, the screen so you guys can kind of experience um, what this would look like. So bear with me for just one moment while I switch uh, the active screen here. All right, Tyler, if you'll, if you'll give me a thumbs up if this is working or not. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks, Tyler. So there's a, um, uh, some information about the, the open house. I'm gonna click on this to move on. And as you can see, you can pan through the different uh, spaces in the room. You can click Thank on you. the wall. I think we're on a bit of a delay there, Kurt, sorry. Okay. So I'm gonna step into the room here. Unless you have multiple, you might have multiple ones open, sorry. We're still okay. on just the pop-up screen. Oh, okay. Um, let me stop my share completely and then I'll restart it. So, sorry folks. Give me one second here. All right, Tyler, are we past the pop-up? Yes, we are. Okay. So now you can see uh, within this virtual room, I'm, I'm panning around here. Uh, the different maps that I showed you are available. You can click on the wall to pull up a, a PDF of it, um, and you can examine the maps more closely if you care to. We have a document library that has the existing comprehensive plan, uh, and that'll open up a, as a PDF here. I'm gonna close that down. Uh, the different uh, technical mem memorandums we've written, there is a, uh, a, a bit of a questionnaire here where we'd ask you just in free form to, to tell us what you think, uh, you know, a great quality of life would be for the city of Oviedo. Um, the presentation will be available here. You can provide general public comments here. Um, there is a questionnaire here where we ask you to provide strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the city. And this is all recorded and, and database, so we can create another um, word cloud out of it. So that's you know what we can do for folks that weren't able to attend today. Um, you know, here's again our, our maps are available up on the wall here, and then this is this is my favorite part. This is the mapping exercise. And uh, Tyler, let me know if this doesn't pop up uh, correctly. But what what we'd ask you to do here is tell us what you think, um, what, you know, what kind of factor you, you are identifying here. Um, say it's a cultural feature, the, I don't know, the farmer's market that's very important to you and, and really defines what you think is great about the city. So you type that in, farmer's market, and then you can drop a pin on the map. And this will all record into a, a database that um, everyone, um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to collect all the, the content that way and we'll be able to see geographically where people thought some of the, um, the strengths and uh, important cultural and, and physical and, and unique areas of the city are. So once you do that and, and type in, you know, the reason why you think it is, make sure you hit submit entry uh, to record that. So what we've tried to do is, is provide a lot of different ways uh, for the community to provide uh, feedback. Uh, for uh, for this project, um, like I said, normally we would do this in person and um, you know do a lot of uh, handwritten notes and, and sticky notes. But you know, this is a, another uh, creative way to to do that. All right, bear I just, with me. I, I just want to uh, um, jump in. We had a uh, comment in the question box, but yeah, one, once you're in the room to to pan and to zoom um, to zoom around you would click and drag your mouse and that would pan you uh, in whichever direction you wanna go. And then to get into any of the, the boards or the places to enter your feedback, it's just you click on that, that one you wanna to get to. So I think um, someone just wanted to make sure that that, um, that was understood. So I, I, appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the comment. Okay, thank you, Tyler. And uh, thank you for the, for the comment. 
Uh, so I'm going uh, to try a new share and go back to my presentation. Again, bear with me. Here we go. All right, like I said, I will put the, the link for this back up. Um, and this, this is open 24 seven for the next um, seven days, seven to 10 days uh, for you to provide your, your feedback there. Uh, it won't be guided. You know, you won't have to listen to me talk, which is, which is a good thing. Um, you're just there to, um, you know, explore at, at, your, uh, at your leisure. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the, uh, the question and answer uh, session. Um, there's three different ways you can participate. First is you can type a question into the, the Q&A feature, uh, which I show uh, the button for. Um, so that's in the bottom ribbon of your screen. Uh, so if, if you type in a question, a member of our team will, will read it aloud and then we will respond to it. Um, you can also raise your hand uh, using uh, that, that button on, on the bottom ribbon of your screen and a member of our team will, will reach out to you and then uh, they will unmute you. So if you would be so kind as to, um, to, to state your name and, and ask your question, uh, and then, then we will respond to it verbally. Um, and if you are on the phone, which some people, it doesn't look like anybody is, but um, Zoom does have uh, accommodations for phone callers, you can dial star nine, and that's the equivalent of doing a, a hand raise. And uh, again, just wanted to remind everybody for, for, uh, for the record that this, this meeting is being recorded. So, um, Tyler, um, have we received any uh, any questions yet, or any hand raises? I do not see uh, any as of yet. <clears throat> Once again, if you use your mouse to go to the bottom, there we go. Someone found the. Uh, this question and answer. Um, this is a question. It's my understanding that FDOT's planning and modeling window is 30 years. Would it be wise to use 30 years for at least that part of our plan? That is, um, thank, thank you, uh, Michelle, for submitting that, that question. Uh, the various agencies do use different time frames. Uh, right now, Metro Plan Orlando is doing a, a 2045. Uh, planning time frame, so that would come in right between the the city's time frame and and the FDOT. Um, they do use uh, similar uh, projections um, for for population growth, um, but we can look into uh, seeing whether or not we want to uh, sync up with that. So thank you for for bringing that up. We have a, another question: uh, Are there any plans to create meeting places for teenagers in the short term? So I, I would love to see the responses that we get from uh, people on the um, on the mapping exercise because I think you know your community a lot better than than we do, and you may have um, some ideas for where uh, those 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 um, third places for for teenagers or even for senior citizens uh, to hang out would be. Um, once we um, we get that information, uh, you know we we can take a look at it as as a team. Um, and then there's also the, the parks and recreation and open space element that we need to assess to find out whether or not the city has, um, you know, has, has um, uh, created all, all the parks and, and open spaces that the, that the plan requires them to. And if not, then we would look for how we could, you know, meet that level of service standard. So thank you for the question. Tyler, any, any other questions? Yes. Um, does a veto allocate city funds to support local youth and community initiatives like a new Boys and Girls Club? Uh, I do not have the answer to that question. Um, that's something I will have to follow up on. Uh, the, the allocation of, of funds like that from, you know, to, to a specific organization though, is usually not a comprehensive planning function that's more of a, a city budgeting function. We can yes, follow up uh, with staff on that. Yes, in the, in the chat. Um, oh, hello, I can, Mayor. I can, I can answer that right <laughs> now. 
Perfect. Uh, it, no, we do not budget anything currently for Ooh. any nonprofits. Uh, so Boys and Girls Club is completely funded by private donations at this time. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, another question that came in, uh, are there existing or new market studies incorporated uh, into this planning? Uh, yeah, yes, we will. Um, as part of the uh, trends analysis, we are doing a, um, a, 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 a small market study called um, Business Analyst, which is a, a program that we use with RTIS. And that helps us to tell us which of the um, you know industries are um, you know have have growth potential, um, but we, we do not have a um, you know an, an economist as a part of the team. We will we will be doing some um, some light market analyses, and then if there are, if there are other studies available, you know we are of course happy to look at them and see how they you know synthesize them and see how they can work in uh, coordination with uh, the comprehensive plan. Uh, we have another question um, along the lines of uh, recreational activities. Um, are there plans to improve um, the offer for non-competitive sporting activities, um, specifically this uh, attendee asked in the short term? Okay. Uh, I Usually comprehensive plans do not deal with uh, the actual programming of, of uh, competitive or non-competitive activities. Um, it, it's usually more in line with the, let's say, the physical assets. Um, you know, is it a is it a community playground? Is it a regional play or um, park? Um, but there could be some policies if the uh, if the the community you know desires it to to talk about different forms of uh, programming that would take place within those facilities. Are there any other uh, questions, either or, or hand raises? Uh, yes, another one just uh, just came in. Uh, what is the expectation in projections for the widening of 434? Uh, and also, how do we expect the plan for traffic outside of Avito that goes through the city? Okay. Um, maybe Jordan, who's a member of our team, you could look up in our in our. Um, Data analysis report, uh, what we found for 434. I believe that the projections are to widen it. Uh, and we found that within the, uh, the Metro plan, uh, long range transportation plan. Uh, and that may have also been covered in the FDOT uh, five year work plan. Um, I would have to, to verify that, but I believe it is part of our report. So Jordan, if you could take a look at that while we are, um, while we're, while we're, we're talking about this. Um, and, and, and how do we expect the plan for traffic outside of the city of Oviedo is that coordination element that we'll have with the other, the other transportation plans. Um, Metro plan is, is going through their, uh, their long range planning exercise right now. And I think that's why it's important for the city uh, to establish a, you know, it's, it's vision and it's, it's identity and, and, and very clearly state what it is, what the, the city wants to accomplish within its borders. Uh, we have a, another question um, saying the uh, the 50,000 growth was set somewhere in 2004. Uh, shouldn't 2040 be closer to 60,000? Okay, so the the um, the 50,000 growth was, I believe, the uh, the Bieber medium projection. Uh, Bieber publishes a um, a low, a medium, and a high projection. So the high projection may be closer to the the 60,000. Um, that's part of our next phase of work, so we will go back and look at that. And and Bieber really looks at straight line growth based on past performance. Uh, so again, we'd like to look at some scenarios where, say, a major employer comes to town, or um, you know, some kind of uh, economic in inducing activity. Uh, we may also look at it at a um, you know a scenario where maybe a, you know, some, something leaves town and there's, a, and there's a deficit. So we want to look at, you know, different possibilities for the future, but certainly something like a, you know, a, a major employer or some kind of economic catalyst 
uh, could could drive the population projections up. And you know, projections are are just what they are. They're 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 um, they're not always going to be correct. Um, but we try to use the you know the best information from from the sources we have to um, come up with these um, you know these uh, facility uh, and and infrastructure uh, recommendations. Um, we have a, a question on uh, another one on recreation, um, stating that the uh, Oviedo Rec is usually overbooked. Um, and wondering if a second um, center would be considered um, based on the expected population growth. Um, yes, and, and that, um, that is something that, that we would uh, that we would analyze based on population growth and the uh, the level of service standards uh, that the city is, has established. So we will be looking into that. Uh, another uh, attendee says that uh, what's the plan for changing the downtown zoning? Um, stating that it's a kind of a mess right now. There's overlapping and antiquated zoning. So how is that? Okay. Um, so so th there is a there is a downtown master plan that is being updated currently uh, separately from this project. Um, we will be in coordination with them uh, following this meeting uh, to make sure we are all on the same page. Uh, zoning is a, I don't know if the question was specific to zoning, but zoning is a layer of land use control that is underneath the comprehensive plan. Um, so it is um, the, the comprehensive plan has the uh, most, say the most important um, uh, restrictions or allowances. So the zoning, say the, the density of the zoning or the uses allowed in the zoning would not be allowed to exceed what is permitted in the comprehensive plan. Uh, so that's something that we'll, we'll work with um, the other team on and with staff to um, try to, you know, come up with a, a downtown plan that, that, you know, meets everybody's expectations of what Oviedo should be uh, based on, you know, how uh, the community envisions it to be and, and based on those opportunities and, and strengths that you talk, you tell us about. And Kurt, we have our, our first hand raise. Uh, so, uh, Michael, I'm going to click to allow you to talk. You should have a button to do that. If you could just uh, state your name and, and you should have the mic. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm a citizen here in Oviedo. Thank you so much for uh, hosting this event. My apologies if um, what I'm about to ask has already been talked about or answered. I came into the meeting and then I did not have audio due to issues on my end. So I've unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the recording of all this for sure. But um, uh, my question was just about the idea of, the, of these workshops and it, does the city have or is looking to move towards any citizen advisory boards on specific topics or agenda uh, uh, items like development uh, so that citizens provide ongoing um, input outside of just workshop settings and with groups of citizens or is the workshops the uh, um, the first step in a possible uh, setup like that uh, I, I may ask uh, mayor or, or Teresa to help me answer that um, the, the short answer is the the workshops that we are doing as part of this comprehensive plan are the you know the the three that have been scoped for for the comprehensive plan update process? There are numerous other um, citizen committees that that um, you know that, that 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 provide guidance and advice to the to staff and elected officials. Um, but we um, we are not. I guess our process is limited to the the workshops at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Well, I can respond to that. Uh, just that we have um, uh, the land planning agency. Well, that is an advisory board from the, you know, uh, composed of residents, right? And they are the ones that recommend um, development to uh, city council. So uh, we have, you know, the public arts board and the, and the land planning agency board. And uh, I, I did suggest at one point that we consider having a, a uh, inclusive housing task force, and twice that has been uh, not 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 been well received by my colleagues. So 
if you are interested in, in seeing something along those lines, or you, you not, not necessarily that particular task force, but something else that involves participation, I hope you'll come and just talk to the whole council at a regular meeting. We've got one coming up this Monday. Thank you, Mayor. And I have uh, one more question uh, in the uh, question and answer box, and it has to do with transit. And the question is, what uh, might be some future alternatives for transit locally? Okay, uh, so we may look towards policies for um, micro mobility. Uh, so you, you may have seen, um, you know, scooters in, in downtown Orlando, or for bike share. That it could be something that, if the city writes a policy for, then it would be, um, you know, allowable if a company were to say we'd like to come in and introduce that to the city, or it would provide direction to, you know, the city and staff to actually go out and, and sign a contract. So that's something we could look at from a, um, you know, a micro mobility transit standpoint. Um, there's also, um, you know, policies for complete streets that would encourage, um, you know, the, the design uh, and, and use of streets, not for the sole benefit of, of cars, but also for um, pedestrians and cyclists to make those facilities, um, you know, more, more welcoming and, and safer. Um, so that's another, um, you know, transportation alternative uh, that, that we could look at. Um, and then and many cities are starting to think about um, policies for connected and autonomous vehicle um, infrastructure and what they would need to do to support that. And that doesn't mean that the city is gonna go out and put in you know new radios and sensors on day one. Um, what it does is, is, is it provides um, some direction and guidance uh, to take advantage of that opportunity when, when the technology and the funding is available. Well, it looks like we are at uh, 7.04. I don't believe there are any other uh, hand raises or, or questions in the box. Um, I'm going to step back one more slide and uh, encourage you to go to the virtual collaboration space. Um, if you like, you can take a picture of, of the link there below and then uh, then enter it. Um, that link is also found on the city's website. So on the announcements where you uh, announcement for this for this workshop, uh, this link is there. And it, again, it'll be this this entire presentation and all of the Q and A will be broadcast on the city's uh, YouTube uh, channel. And Kurt, sorry to interrupt here, but I just wanted to jump in and answer Stephen's question from earlier. Um, I checked and widening 434 from 417 to Mitchell Hammock, it, it's in the 2040 long range transportation plan um, that FDOT puts out and it's in the Seminole County transportation master plan. Okay. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, so with that, we'd like to we'd like to thank you for uh, for attending our first virtual workshop. Um, sorry, we couldn't see you in person, uh, but we're very grateful that you took the time out of your out of your evening to to spend it with us. Um, please feel free to reach out to to city staff if you have any follow up questions, um, and then we we look forward to uh, seeing you at the at the next workshop or or citizens event. Thank you very much. We're going to uh, pause the recording now.